Cameron is the greatest home court in basketball. It's a place where you feel like you're never alone. When you walk in, it just hits you. All the greats who have played on this court. All the Duke teams have won championships together. As a little kid, I dreamed of having a gym like this to myself. It's a blessing and honor to be here, representing one of the best programs ever. I want to help my team hang banners and be remembered on and off the court. To understand how I got here, you have to understand where I'm from. Chicago is the best. This is the reason why I'm the person I am now. People here are real. You know, don't nobody here in the community complain. And uh, they just look out for one another. Everybody gets along. Even though it's a lot of adversity, it's a lot of violence around my, my community. Everybody's just still together. It's positive. Um, I think that's where the news doesn't get a chance to see that people thrive in an environment of adversity. There's gang violence going on. There's shooting going on. There's you know, all kinds of stuff going on. But, you know what? It makes you a little tougher. But also, it makes you grateful at the same time. I just feel like I'm safe everywhere. And that's, that's how I always feel. My family is uh, one of the big parts of my life and how I succeed because I get that support that I always needed. My kids growing up in the community I'm from, they got a taste of how I was when I was growing up too. You know, it's literally like being Michael Jordan's son in a local area. You know, it's like you're Sonny Parker's son. So Jabari never became Jabari until, you know, he probably eighth grade, seventh or eighth grade. Like me and him, we were always called Little Sonny. Chicago is one of the greatest places I'll always have in my heart. Well, playing outdoors, you know, our parents, you know, are really protective about like some of the places that we go and decisions that we make, you know, being out at certain times. Um, the church, it was literally a place where if they found out we were there, it's, we can't get in trouble. <laughs> you know, we could be anywhere on a Friday or a Saturday night in the middle of the night. And then if they realize we're at the church, it's, it's, it's no reason for them to be that mad at us. You know, we have a key, no one's going to be there, you know, so. You know, and then the youth, the amount of youth in our church, it was just really us. It wasn't that many at the time. So, you know, having the gym at the church, it was just, it was like easy access all the time. So there's nowhere else we really wanted to be. Here, he can just be a kid. Here, he can just be a normal person. We don't make a huge deal about basketball with him. He likes to know about other people and when you when you talk to him and ask him a couple of questions about his life, whether it's basketball or not, he thinks of something to ask you. He comes with us and he visits uh, people that are shut in, that are often forgotten in the community, and visits these, these people that, that can't make it to church because they're older for health reasons. He, he likes going and visit, visiting them and trying to lift spirits and do the best that he can to share a positive message and help their spirituality. Having the church, it was a greater like form of comfort because it's literally our church building. to go to this big program. I wanted to leave the city and do something real spectacular. But instead, I choose the more difficult route where I come from a, a school that's, that's known for basketball, but not nationally. He felt committed to helping the people in his neighborhood. He wanted to get better every day. Uh, he challenged us as coaches to make sure he got better. You know, he just really wanted to win. And we just built as a coach and player. Leading up to the summer, everything was going great. Then I got my injury and everything started collapsing. Breaking one of the most important pieces of your foot uh, and being off your foot for six months now, weight bearing, it's kind of hard getting back to running. Right away, I didn't take baby steps, I didn't crawl, but right away I just started running. Yeah, it was very difficult and very depressing for him, six months. 
And, uh, you know, just going through that, not being able to play for the first time in his life, uh, it was really hard for him. And I used to talk to him a lot. It's just like riding a bicycle. You know, all the things that you've learned previously in the past, you'll be able to do those things once you get healthy. It was the saddest um, experience for our whole family and also for Jabari, because we, as his parents, kind of went through a depression. And you, you know, you feel for your kid and what they're going through, and you want to make things better for them. Now, he would be outside running 11 to 12 o'clock at night while we were asleep in, in the dark, in the freezing cold, just to get back. So he did a lot of this on his own, but he had the will, you know, to, to want to get back. You know, he wanted to participate in place. So I said, okay, Jabari, you do your condition, your rehab. And he did that and he played, he got MVP. They won the tournament at Pontiac again for the third straight year. Coming back from the injury felt great, but there was a lot of people doubting me and my team and thinking that we couldn't do it anymore. And what that taught me is to keep striving for greatness, even though people are doubting you. You know, he wanted to be just a regular student. I mean, I told him it was hard. You 6'9", so everybody know you're playing basketball. When we walked off for the last game at the state championship, you know, when he came in, he said he wanted to win four state championships, and when we won the last one, it was just rewarding. And, you know, he's like, Coach, we did it. After we won, I was at peace. It was just something that I knew that I've been trying to get for a long time. Jabari got his first Division I scholarship in sixth grade. And then as time went on, seventh, eighth grade, you know, more coaches, you know, now it's starting to get a little bit more intense and chaotic. Trying to figure out like what would help him be the greatest person, you know, off the court, on the court. I would catch him in his room and you know, going through the internet, reading history about this coach or talking about this program. I, I was just there to help him do homework. But, you know, when it came to the decision, you know, he knew the right place because he did all of his homework. Uh, the fall of 2013, I will be attending Duke University. I and Sunny were like, yes, you know, because as parents, you want your kid to to just go to these prestigious academic programs because, you know, you just realize it's bigger than basketball and there is life after basketball. When he just got back the other day and we were talking, he said it just seemed like still being here. You know, the family-oriented team and how organized Coach K is and, you know, the same thing. So he said it was so similar for him to make that transition from here to there. He's learned so much on and off the court, you know, just the things that Duke does. They're very professional, the coaches, the staff. I'm starting to get that glimpse of how important the program really is and how important our bonds are uh, between us and the guys and the family. And I just think he's so intrigued by everything here and by learning. And that's something that's very different from elite level athletes. He has a chance to be one of the, the most versatile players to play the game. He seems to really, for a guy his age, get the we of the game rather than the me of the game. And that's, that's a hard thing. I asked him, how many points you scored the bar? He said, Dad, we won the game. That's all what he's about. And if you look at his track record, he's won. And he just used to win. That's the best type of dad to get the race. Why does this guy have to be the winner for him? He's, a, he's an engaging personality for the people who've been around him. He's a joy to be around. And as a player, the more you watch him play, you're amazed by what he can do now, but you're absolutely floored by the possibilities that exist for him beyond what he's doing now. And that's not true of many players. I'm not saying that, you know, everything that he's done is just supposed to happen because I know he worked for it. But I definitely know that when it comes to Jabari doing great things, you know, I almost, I almost expect to see it. And obviously I'm going to be ridiculously excited and everybody's going to be excited about it when it actually comes through.